The Siberian Husky is the most versatile purebred sled dog of North America. The breed consistently takes top honors in endurance sled competitions and is prized for his friendly, gentle temperament. It was the needs of a developing Alaska that first brought the Siberian Husky here from Siberia around the turn of the century. Early Alaskan settlers had heard of the remarkable physical stamina of these Russian bred dogs and began importing them for competitive racing. They soon became members of polar expeditions and in 1925 helped deliver desperately needed medicines to Nome during a raging diphtheria epidemic. The popularity of the breed soon spread to New England and by 1930 the Siberian Husky was admitted to AKC registration. You'll be seeing many Siberian Huskies during this presentation. Some are outstanding examples of the breed, others are less so, but all are representative examples and will help your understanding of the breed. In this presentation, the traditional Russian pronunciation, Siberian Husky, is used throughout. The pronunciation, Siberian, is equally acceptable. Now, let's begin. The key to your judging should be moderation. Any exaggeration of a particular trait at the expense of any other is not in keeping with the requirements for functional efficiency and should be severely penalized, as the versatility of the Siberian Husky stems from correct conformation and temperament. The term Husky is perhaps an unfortunate one, for there is nothing coarse or heavy about this breed. The Siberian Husky, or Siberian, is a medium-sized working dog, quick and light on his feet, and free and graceful in action. He should be able to carry a light load at moderate speed over great distances. Indeed, it was the Siberian Husky who broke 1,400 miles of trail during Admiral Byrd's expedition to Antarctica. A well-balanced, sturdy dog is the hallmark of the breed. His body proportions and form reflect this basic balance of power, speed, and endurance. You should remember that any characteristic which interferes with the breed's purpose is more serious than one which is less directly related to function. Let's begin our study with the head. The skull is of medium size and in proportion to the body. There is a well-defined stop and the muzzle is about the same length as the back skull. The skull is only slightly rounded on top and tapers gradually from the widest point to the eyes. Again, Moderation is the key. This dog's well-proportioned head is in balance with the rest of his body. But here, the head appears too heavy and is out of balance with the body. This is faulty, as is a head which is too small. This correct head includes the desired muzzle medium in length and width, tapering gradually to the nose. See how the bridge of the nose is straight from stop to tip. There is no sign of snipiness. What about this dog's muzzle? It is pointed, not squared off, and the bridge of the muzzle is Roman nosed, not flat as the standard requires. This dog's head is also incorrect. The back skull is too domed rather than only slightly rounded as called for in the standard. This lovely head study includes a moderately wide straight muzzle, well-defined, moderate stop, and slightly rounded back skull. The lips are well pigmented and close fitting. The teeth should meet in a scissors bite. Any other bite is faulty. The nose color is according to the dog's coat color, 
black in gray, tan, or black dogs. Liver colored in copper dogs. Copper in this breed is understood to mean red. Pure white dogs may have flesh colored noses. A snow nose, like this one, is also acceptable. A snow nose should not be confused with lack of pigmentation. The keen, almost mischievous expression of the Siberian Husky comes in part from its eyes. The eyes are almond-shaped, moderately spaced, and set a trifle obliquely. As for color, eyes may be any shade of brown or blue. This dog's one blue and one brown eye are also acceptable. As is this parti-colored eye. The placement and shape of the eye is very important to Siberian expression. A large round eye, like this, detracts from expression and is faulty. Ears are of medium size, triangular in shape, close-fitting, and set high on the head. The slightly rounded tips should point straight up like this. They're held strongly erect and are thick, well furred, and slightly arched at the back. These ears are faulty. They're set too low and are wide at the base. Ear set should be counted more important than ear size. What about these ears? They're too tall and are pointed at the tips and should also be faulted. Here again is the correct Siberian head. See how the balance of proper components produces the characteristic alert, quizzical expression. Now let's examine the Siberian Husky's neck and body. Here again, balance and moderation are the guidelines. The neck is medium in length, arched and carried proudly erect as the dog stands at attention. See how the neck blends gradually into the shoulders. When the dog is trotting, the neck is extended so that the head is carried slightly forward. This neck, however, appears too short and thick, which is a fault. The head seems almost to sit on the shoulders. This correct neck blends smoothly into well-laid-back shoulders. Good layback and musculature are essential for performance. The upper arm is about equal in length to the shoulder blade and angles slightly backward from point of shoulder to elbow. It should never be perpendicular to the ground. From the front, you can see the clean, taut lines of the shoulders. There should be no bulging, heaviness, or looseness of shoulder. This dog's shoulders, on the other hand, are too heavy and are incorrect. What about this dog's shoulders? They are too straight and should be faulted. Straight shoulders or upper arms will hamper the dog's efficiency on the trail. Loose or slack shoulders are also faulty. The chest is deep and strong. The deepest point should be just behind and level with the elbow. The chest should not be too broad. This chest width is correct, allowing enough room for heart and lung function, but not so wide that the dog's efficiency of movement will be hampered. See how the rib cage is rounded, but not barrel shaped. This dog's chest is too deep and too wide. 
His rib cage is also barrel shaped and should be faulted. Slab sidedness, although less prevalent in the breed, should also be faulted. This dog's chest is correct, with about a hand's breadth between the forelegs. The forelegs are parallel and straight, with elbows close to the body and turned neither in nor out. There is good, strong bone, not round, but oval. Bone is substantial, but never coarse or heavy. From the side, the pasterns are slightly slanted, with a strong, flexible joint. This dog's weak pasterns are faulty. There is too much slope. Feet are oval in shape, but not long. They are medium in size, compact, and well furred between toes and pad. The pads themselves are tough and thickly cushioned. Because of the variety of terrain over which the Siberian must work, there is some variation in the shape of the foot. This cat-like foot and this longer, looser, hare foot are not correct. This oval shape is desired. Proper leg-to-body proportions are crucial for the hard work that is the Siberian's traditional function as a sled dog. The length of leg from elbow to ground is slightly more than the distance from elbow to top of withers. Dew claws on forelegs may be removed. This dog's legs appear to be too short. The Siberian's body is characterized by a straight, strong back with a level top line from withers to croup. It is of medium length, neither too cobby nor slack from excessive length. Note, too, the slight tuck-up. The Siberian Husky should be somewhat rectangular in appearance, with the distance from point of shoulder to end of pelvis being slightly longer than the distance from withers to ground. The loin is taut and lean, with strong muscling. Muscling over the loin should never give the impression of a roached back, seen here. This bitch's excessive length of back and loin contribute to the weak top line seen here. What about this dog's top line? It's sloping rather than level and is also incorrect. This dog's top line and underline are correct. Note again the slight tuck up. The top line is level and merges with a slightly sloping croup. This dog's tail and tail set are correct. This well-furred fox brush tail is set on just below the level of the top line. The fox brush shaped tail of the Siberian Husky is one of the most cherished characteristics and serves a useful purpose. It is used as a rudder when he works and it serves to cover the dog's nose as he rests and protects him against the cold. The tail is usually carried in a graceful sickle curve over the back. The tail does not curl to either side of the body, nor does it snap flat against the back. The hair on the top, sides, and bottom of the tail is of medium length, giving it the appearance of a round brush. How would you evaluate this dog's tail? It's set too low due to a steep croup. This flat croup with high set tail is also incorrect. And this tail is too tightly curled and should be severely faulted. A trailing tail like this is normal for the Siberian when he is working or in repose. 
In the show ring, the dog may gait with his tail either trailing or curved gracefully over the back. Either tail carriage in these circumstances is equally correct. When the dog is standing, the tail may be up or down. The hindquarters should exhibit well-muscled, powerful thighs like these. The stifles are well-bent, and the hock joints are well-defined and set low to the ground. From the rear, the hind legs are moderately spaced and parallel. The feet should point straight ahead. Muscling is extremely important in a working dog, and judges should feel for it in the ring. These sickle hocks are incorrect. The lack of flexion at the hock, best seen when the dog is moving, can be a severe problem when it comes to a long day's work. This is faulty. These cow hocks are equally faulty. This dog is too straight in stifle. This dog has correct rear angulation. See how the hocks are on a line just behind the point of buttocks. Note that dew claws on rear legs must be removed. Gait for a working dog is extremely important as a test of conformation. Judges should thoroughly evaluate each dog's gait from the front, the side, and the rear. The Siberian Husky's characteristic gait should be smooth and seemingly effortless. He is quick and light on his feet, with good reach in front and drive behind. This characteristic gait can only be produced by properly formed and well-balanced body proportions. It is best evaluated on a loose lead. As the dog comes toward you, you should see the forelegs gradually converge inward so that the pads fall in a line directly under the longitudinal center of the body as speed increases. This tendency to single track is natural and desirable. going away, you should see the legs carried straight forward, with no turning in or out. The hind legs should move in the path of the forelegs on the same side. This dog is traveling with the legs much too wide apart and is crossing in front. It is incorrect movement. This is the correct gait. It's smooth, steady, and light. See how the head is lowered and slightly forward as the dog moves and the tail trails. The top line remains firm and level. Remember, the Siberian should be shown on a loose lead, like this, at a moderate trot. Judges should insist on this requirement. Moving the dog at too fast a gait, making him overreach, is incorrect and inefficient. Now let's discuss the Siberian's coat. It's a double coat, providing plenty of protection against ice and bitter cold. The coat is medium length, giving a well-furred appearance. The coat should never be so long as to obscure the clean-cut outline of the dog. A coat so long or shaggy as to distort the proportions of the dog must be penalized. The outer coat is straight and somewhat smooth lying. It should never be harsh, nor standing off from the body. The undercoat is soft and dense, and is of sufficient length to support the outer coat. This dog's coat is not correct. It's too long, and gives the dog a shaggy appearance. Judges should be aware that coats can camouflage inadequacies in conformation as well as cover virtues. You must use your hands to determine actual structure. Long, rough, or shaggy coats should be faulted. In texture, the coat is not harsh nor silky, but soft to the touch. 
It's important to remember that the Siberian Husky is a natural breed and that trimming or scissoring of the coat, other than the feet and whiskers, is never to be condoned. Any such trimming, not allowed by the standard, is to be severely penalized. Note also that lack of undercoat is normal during the shedding season. As for color, all colors from black to pure white are allowed. Facial markings are common in this breed, including heavy masking, heavy shadings, or open faces. All are equally acceptable. Coat color is a cosmetic feature in this breed, not related to function, so any color or marking is permissible. The Siberian Husky's temperament comes from his tradition as a team player. He's gentle and friendly, alert and outgoing, but retains a measure of independence. He is not a guard dog, and so is not overly suspicious of strangers or aggressive with other dogs. Aggressive behavior toward dogs or people cannot be tolerated in this breed and should be severely penalized. Shyness is not a characteristic trait either, though some measure of reserve and dignity may be expected in the mature dog. As for size, dogs should be between 21 and 23 and a half inches at the withers, bitches between 20 and 22 inches. In weight, dogs should be about 45 to 60 pounds, and bitches 35 to 50 pounds. Weight should always be considered in relation to overall proportion and balance. Males should be masculine but never coarse. The bitches are feminine but without weakness of structure. These measurements and weights are the upper and lower limits of the range, with no preference given to either extreme. However, dogs over 23 and a half inches or bitches over 22 inches must be disqualified. This is the only disqualification called for in the standard. Judges should not hesitate to measure any dog whose height they question. The Siberian Husky is a perfect example of an animal intimately connected with his environment and his work. Fastidiously clean and adaptable to all kinds of living conditions, the intelligence, tractability, and eager disposition of the Siberian Husky have earned his place as an agreeable companion and willing and dependable worker.